when the door opened up and her dog came through and Jeannie walked in and said, this is Jamie Clausen, call 911. I was in absolute shock. It was, it was kind of like a dream. It still kind of is like I, it's, I don't know how to wrap my head around this. And when I was talking, we talked to her a little bit um, when we called 911. Kristen, we got uh, the name of the suspect and the color of the car. Uh, so we were able to get that to the, the police right away. Um, and then we just made her feel safe until the police arrived. A major story across the nation today. That man and his wife are retelling the moment Jamie Kloss appeared at their front door. The 13 year old girl had been missing for three months after her parents were found murdered. Welcome everyone. It's good to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy and I'm Tom Sherry. That man that we just heard from says his neighbor was walking her dog when she was approached by Jamie near a heavily wooded area. The neighbor took Jamie to a nearby home and then once inside the couple says they had no doubt who it was. Absolutely knew it was her. Um, we've seen her picture a million times around here. Um, she looked exactly the same as she did in her picture, um, a little bit thinner, I would say. And then she looked really tired and like she's been fighting a battle for weeks. Mm. Mm. Jamie was missing for 88 days. She was kidnapped in October when police were called to her Wisconsin home. Inside, both of her parents were found dead with gunshot wounds. After months of searching and investigating, police say it was an emotional moment when they heard Jamie was found alive. You know, my legs started to shake, man. It was, it was awesome. It was just the stress and relief. In the 30 minutes that passed after Jamie was found and before police got to the house, the couple says she was not scared anyone was coming after her. The suspect in this case is 21 year old Jake Thomas Patterson. Police arrested Patterson just minutes after Jamie was found last night. Authorities say the 13 year old gave police a description of Patterson's car and they quickly found it. He is now being held on charges for kidnapping and homicide. In a news conference today, police say he planned his actions and took many proactive steps to hide his identity. Police also said that Patterson has no criminal history in the state of Wisconsin, and they think that Jamie was the only target the night she was abducted. There was some question about if Jamie and Patterson had previously met on social media, but authorities said that was false. Patterson is set to appear in court on Monday. In other news, President Donald Trump is indicating he may end the border wall standoff by declaring a national emergency. If he does, he may try to use Pentagon money to pay for the wall. So the partial government shutdown now matches the longest ever. It's at 21 days. That means it's tied now with the 1996 shutdown under President Bill Clinton and with the White House and Democrats refusing to budge on funding for a border wall. President Trump is closer to bypassing Congress Congress on his own. Meantime, the National Air Traffic Controllers Association filed a lawsuit against the federal government over non-payment of its workers during the shutdown. 800,000 federal workers are not getting paychecks. Many of them saying lawmakers should reopen the government and hash out political differences later. Taking a turn to weather now, beautiful conditions up at Schweitzer today. Wow. We know fog blanketed a lot of the lower elevations of sunny skies up in the mountains today. Yeah, and the uh, fog and low clouds that we're seeing in the lower elevations, <laughs> that freezing fog makes for difficult driving. Yeah. We also now have an air stagnation advisory, not for Spokane County yet, but certainly the surrounding areas, all areas to the east of us and to the north of us, everywhere shaded in black. And this air stagnation advisory in effect until the middle of next week, Wednesday at 7 p.m. We need a weather system to move in, and we think Wednesday Wednesday night we might see some of that happening so we're going to uh, and I suspect we'll see that advisory as we get more and more into the weekend maybe get pushed into the Spokane area as well right now our air quality is good but it's forecast tomorrow uh, to drop to moderate and it probably will deteriorate uh, even more next week when you look at the radar there is absolutely no activity at all no rain we'll look for an overnight low of about 36 degrees 43 the expected high tomorrow again freezing fog late tonight overnight tomorrow morning if we we burn it off. We should see temperatures climb into the low 40s uh, for the rest of the weekend. I've got Sunday a high of 40 degrees after a morning low of 26. Again, partly cloudy skies expected for both days, but with some dense early morning fog. 
Well, in other news, it's been a long fight for one former Spokane Valley firefighter. Yeah, so he just won his final victory in a case that went all the way to the Washington Supreme Court. Mark Hanrahan joins us with a look at a story that we're working on for you for our 5 o'clock newscast. Good afternoon, guys. In 2012, John Sprague was fired for using religious language on his government email account. He was sending messages to fellow firefighters about a Christian fellowship. He was given an ultimatum to stop or lose his job. Well, he took his case to the courts and says there was a lot of struggle and sacrifice, but he says it was worth it. Whether it means putting the uniform on or being forced to take one off, you've got to take a stand and do what's right. Our Whitney Ward has been following this case and has more on how it all wound up in his favor. That story coming up new at five tonight. Back to you guys. Thank you, Mark. Six million dollars. That's how much lawmakers estimate it will take to process all the backlogged sexual assault kits in Washington State. Now that's according to Washington State Patrol. So despite, uh, despite local and federal funding, more than 8,000 sexual assault kits are still waiting to be processed. One state representative says she's going to propose funding to expand the state patrol's crime lab in Vancouver. Right now, when a kit comes in, uh, it's taking eight months to a year. And that is a lot of time. We had someone and Lacey who reoffended the day before they got the results back. So again, we need a sense of urgency. Well, that proposal is to add technicians, equipment and robots. She says the goal is to bring the testing process down to about 45 days. And new estimates show between six and seven million people have gotten the flu so far this season and more than 80,000 people have been hospitalized. This is the first time the CDC is providing real time information instead of releasing final numbers at the end of the season. So now doctors are saying not enough people are seeking medical care, continuing to urge people to get the vaccine if they have not already. These numbers are a reminder that flu can cause severe illness and hospitalizations. If you haven't been vaccinated yet, we still expect several more weeks of flu activity, so get your flu vaccine now. Well, the flu is considered to be widespread in 30 states, including Idaho. At this point, though, Washington and Montana not considered among the state's hardest hit right now. Okay.